1962. Um, from 66, when I became a head professional, uh, my, my goal was to play the PGA Tour. And uh, I had a pretty good game, but it wasn't up to the standard that you needed to play on tour. I played the Mexican Tour, I played the South American Tour, and I've won a lot of tournaments as a club professional, and I've won some overseas. But uh, to have a game to play in the PGA Tour or the LPGA, it's got to be special. I mean, it takes an absolutely a special person to be able to do that because the brain has to come into play. You've got to manage your game. You've got bunker play. you got to be able to putt. Look at Sergio Garcia. The last 10 years, one of the best ball strikers on tour. He's never won a major. What he's won, maybe three or four tournaments in the United States because he's considered one of the worst putters on tour. The things that I, that I uh, really believe in, what I've studied over my, my lifetime so far, there's four things that are critical. Okay? One is impact. If you don't have impact, you're going to struggle. Impact would look like this over the ball. It would be like this here. That's the impact position. This is the address position. This is impact position. So having that shaft form a straight line between the shoulder, hands, and club head is extremely critical. The hands have to be in front of the ball. They can't be behind the ball, and you can't get scooping. Okay. Second thing I look at is club head lag, the club head trailing the hands this way. If we have throw away early, it's a major power leak. So the power leak doesn't work. So if you want to hit the ball with power, the angle of the left arm and shaft has to be held into the right knee. And then when you get into here, then you can go ahead and release the body and release, the, and release your arms to the ball. Uh, the hardest thing to teach is trying to create lag in the swing. So number one is impact, two is club head lag, three is the path the club travels. It's like you guys and you ladies coming down a highway there, if you get off the highway, you're gonna have an accident. Well, if I'm taking the club back uh, outside, or if I'm taking it back inside and coming over it this way, coming across the plane, if I'm swinging inside out too much, outside in too much, I'm going to create a lot of problems. I'm going to have flip. The ball is not going to go in the direction I want it to go. So having the club come back and down on the right path and through on the right path creates the correct speed, ball direction, and of course, number four, it's applied by the body. So the fourth thing I look at is the pivot. The pivot is your body. How does the pivot work? Well. And if you could do this for four or five minutes a day, think about how good this would be. If you could stand there in front of a mirror and just make a sharp turn to the right and get your shoulder back over your right knee this way and then turn back to the left this way instead of going this way or this way. So just standing there making a sharp turn to the right into your right side here, getting the shoulder down, the shaft pointing down, and then transferring the weight back to the left side into a real nice balanced finish. Five minutes a day. Five minutes a day is all you need to do that. Five minutes a day. And the other two things I want to talk about would be the grip. Okay, grip, aim, alignment, setup. And that's what I'm going to look at today with all of you on the range. Um, grip, I hold the hand out directly like this here, hold the club in the right hand with the toe pointing up. I want the club face slightly closed. Lay it across the base of the left hand and just cup the hand over to the right. So when I do that, this V points to the right shoulder and I see two knuckles here. And from this point on, I take my right hand, slide it over top of my thumb like this here. There. So it's left hand, not this way, but this way. Cross the base, cup it over, push it over, slide the hand up, and there's my grip. Both V's point toward the right shoulder. I use an overlapping grip. You can do the same thing with a 10 finger grip. You can do the same thing interlock grip. They're all correct. Okay, small hands should use probably a, a 10 finger grip. Okay, a lot of ladies I teach a 10, a 10 finger grip because they don't have the strength in their hands sometimes to, to do the things that has to happen in, in the golf swing. Uh, aim. Well, if I'm aiming for the 75-yard marker and I'm trying to hit it to the fly, how am I going to do that? 
So if I'm aiming over here, I've got to have a major flaw creating the ball to go over there. So you have to make sure you're, you're aligned correctly. So how do you do that? Well, what I do is stand behind the ball, I pick up my target. I'll bring my target from out there to about five feet in front of the ball. So now my eyes are staring at that target. Then I bring my feet close together. I make sure that I'm parallel left to the target. And then I set the club face. And then from here, my left foot will move from a seven iron to a sand wedge about two inches past the ball. There you go, two inches past the ball. You can check it out by putting the head right here. The right foot then will move to the right. And then what I want you to do from here is hold the club up, push your buttocks out as far as you can, and lock your legs. Now from here, I'm going to bend, put the club behind the ball, and then give me a little knee flex. This assures me a straight back. You don't want to walk into the ball and just do this. So if you could push your butt out, put the club behind the ball, and just a very slight knee flex, that assures you a pretty straight back where you need to be. So, club head behind the ball, left foot two inches past the ball, right foot to the right, a couple of short right waggles, and from here, I can go ahead and turn back through the ball and make a nice pass away from the ball. The third thing is ball position. Okay, we just talked about the seven iron to the sand wedge, two inches past the ball. So if I had a sand wedge here, I'd walk into the ball like this here, okay, move my left foot two inches past the ball, and move my right foot just a touch to the right. So where's the ball position? It's off my, it's off my, uh, inside my back right foot, right of center. But if it was a seven iron, my right foot would be further to the right, see? That brings my spine angle more to the right. So, sand wedge, pitching wedge, nine iron, eight iron, seven iron. But the left foot never changed, two inches past the ball. And when I go into the six iron, five iron range, my left foot will be a pa an inch past the ball. And this is pretty simple to do. Seven iron to sand wedge, two inches. Five iron to three wood, one inch. One inch past the ball. Right foot's here. Four, four iron hybrid, three iron hybrid, three wood driver. So the wide, the stance gets wider and your spine tilt is more to the right. Now I'm behind the ball pretty good. And that's the five iron to a driver. Uh, I'm sorry, three wood. And then the driver, which is the most critical club in your bag, you want the ball off your left heel. With your right foot outside your shoulders, head's gonna be back on the right side, Right knee's kicked in, hands are here. Now I'm behind the ball. And what I see is, I see too much ball too far back, head too far forward. You don't see many average players set up like this here. They're, all, they're always set up the incorrect way. And from that point on, then you can go ahead and make a nice turn behind the ball, transfer your weight to your left side of your body, and get to a finish. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is the transition. The most critical move in golf for all of you is what starts the downswing. I would say that probably, how many here are single digit handicappers? Got one, okay, one single, okay. The average player, 98% of all golfers in the country start down with, this is a fact now, and this is the order that I'd want you to start your downswing. <coughs> one to be the hips, two the shoulders, three the arms, for the hands. The average player starts first, arm shoulders, hips go third. It's always arm shoulders. So what I'd like to see you do would be to get in front of the mirror at home, set your posture, push your butt out, little knee flex, put your hands like this here. Now I'm going to transfer my weight to my right side this way. Now from this point on, all my weight is inside my right foot. Now I'm going to turn to the top. Okay, now from this point on, the hips work three ways. They move lateral, they're turning, and they go down. So it would look like this here. And you can see 
the shoulders are held back a little bit. So all the work is being done in here. And as I move this way, my shoulders fall on my hips. See? Now I'm on top of the ball right there. So if you took it back to the top of the back swing with a driver, it would look like this. Now, watch my arms come down. But I'm not pulling them down. I'm just transferring my weight correctly. And but what we see is this. Or this. You don't see a lot of this with amateur players. Right there. And once you make that move, it's going to bring your arms down. And then from here, just keep turning through the golf ball. So you go back. There's the transition. Turn through the ball. And get to a balanced finish. So again, things that you can do at home, five minutes a day, put the shaft across your shoulders, turn into your right leg, feel like you're moving back into your right side this way, see, here. Now watch my lower body, look, look. Just pull my arms down, look. And as I make that move, I'm gonna continue to take my upper torso and turn through the golf ball, see, through the ball, look. There's the finish. Does that make sense? not easy. So again, four criteria. Number one, got to have impact. Okay? You got to have some lag. You got to have that handle held down. You got to use your body correctly, and the shaft's got to be swung in the correct path. And uh, if you can do those four things, have a good setup, good posture, good grip. Don't be afraid to load into your back leg. Don't be afraid to transfer your weight to your, to your front foot through the golf ball and it, it, it's not hard and don't have any muscle in your golf swing get rid of the muscle grip pressure about one to ten about a five six about a six with a driver all right okay my hands are firm but my wrists are very soft and flexible any questions I bet you already hit some balls hit some pretty good shots Let's uh, let's give it a shot, and we're gonna go tee it up. Thank you. Okay.